Good day everybody, this is Chris of the Ancient Scholar and I'd like to do a quick video on axis deviation. How do we determine it? Why it's important? So, you get a 12 lead ECG on somebody. This happens to be a 12 lead ECG of me from a few years ago, back when I was in my 30s. All right. And so here you have the information that the monitor gets off the interpretation. Here you have the actual 12 lead ECG. Let's talk about axis. So what is axis? So axis is essentially the mean or the average direction that most of the electrical activity is moving through the heart. So if you take a look at the heart here, the mean direction of the electrical activity more or less starts in the SA node in the, in the upper right part of the heart and then moves down to the lower left part of the heart, um, what we call the um, apex of the heart. So that black arrow demonstrates more or less the average direction that most of the electrical activity flows through in the heart. That's called the axis. Specifically, what we're talking about is the QRS axis or the Q axis, that little number right there, 75 in this case, all right? So that is what normal axis is. And the way that we can conceptualize this further is by looking at the limb leads. And remember, the three limb leads make a, more or less, make a triangle around the heart known as Einthoven's triangle. So I have my electrodes. I have electrodes placed on the patient, the right arm electrode, the left arm electrode, and the left leg electrode. The RL, the right leg, acts as a ground. All right, so if we take a look at one, so lead one, is in this direction. So the RA is a negative electrode and LA becomes the positive electrode. And then lead two looks from RA to LL. So RA is negative and LL is a positive electrode. And then lead three looks from LA to LL. So LA in this case is a negative electrode. LL is positive. And remember the limb leads are bipolar, so you can look at them through in multiple directions, so that's not a problem. All right, so a quick, easy way to determine if the axis is normal on a person is if you look at the limb leads, or one, two, and three, the electrical activity is more or less moving toward the positive electrodes in all three leads, right? So the electrical activity is more or less moving in this direction, more or less moving toward the positive. And remember, whenever you see, whenever electrical activity is moving toward a positive electrode, that's going to, going to produce positive deflection on the ECG. So when I print a 12 lead off on somebody and I look at the limb leads, one, two, and three, and I see a QRS that is upright in all three leads, that tells me right away, without looking at numbers, that I'm dealing with someone that has normal axis. Now, when it comes to axis deviation, the quickest way to determine that is just to go to your monitor, look at the Q or the QRS axis, and whatever that is in degrees tells you the actual axis. In this case, it's 75 degrees, which would mean that the axis would be right down here with me. So let's talk about what normal axis is. So normal axis is generally considered zero. So that arrow is going from zero to plus 90 degrees. So anywhere in this range is considered normal. All three QRSs will be upright in the limb leads. There is a slight variation of normal that we sometimes refer to as physiological left axis deviation, where we allow uh, from a negative 30, so zero to negative 30. So if that arrow were to shift up in this range a little bit, zero to negative 30, that would be what we call physiological left axis deviation. And this, this, can, this can just kind of occur over age as the left side of the heart, the left ventricle maybe enlarges a little bit. You just get some natural left ventricular enlargement, and so you're going to have more depolarization through that that um, thickened, more uh, more muscle mass, and it's going to shift it up just a little bit. But that's generally considered a normal variation when you take age and underlying health considerations into context, right? So from negative 30 to plus 90 is generally considered normal. Zero to negative 30 is 
what we generally consider physiological left axis deviation. Now, when that goes above and you have something that looks like this from negative 30 to negative 90, negative 30 to negative 90 degrees here, that is what we call pathological left axis deviation. So you go to your 12 lead, you look, and if that QRS or that Q axis is between negative 30 and negative 90 degrees, that patient has pathological left axis deviation. And you will see as you become pathological, right, the deflection, the morphology of the limb leads will change. So with pathological left axis deviation, since electrical activity is moving more in this direction, you can clearly see like lead three, the QRS is gonna be pointing down instead of up, right? Um, and so that's why if you just quickly look at your limb leads, if they're all upright, you're good to go axis wise. But if they are not, then that tells you you have some sort of axis deviation going on. All right, so that's pathological left axis deviation. And some of the major causes or the major differentials you wanna think about if you detect this in your patient will include things like uh, severe obesity, um, later pregnancy, left bundle branch blocks can do this, in large inferior wall myocardial infarctions, left ventricular hypertrophy or LVH, substantial ascites, and left anterior fascicular hemi blocks are all differentials you wanna think about when it comes to pathological left axis deviation. So let's talk about right axis deviation, right? So rightward deviations, are gonna be the arrow pointing in, ooh, no. See if I can get that arrow to stay on the heart. Gonna be that arrow, that mean direction of electrical activity moving in that direction. So right axis deviation is considered plus 90 to about 180 degrees. So in this range here. So with right axis deviation, you're gonna see that um, lead one is going to shift downward because that electrical activity is moving toward the negative electrode in lead one, right? Um, what are some things that cause right axis deviation? So think of right bundle branch block, right ventricular hypertrophy as opposed to left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, pulmonary disease. There's a certain type of right-sided heart failure called core pulmonale that causes right chamber enlargement uh, that can cause right axis deviation. Incredibly thin people can sometimes develop right axis deviation. Oh no. Um, left posterior hema blocks can cause right axis deviation as well. And then the last major type of axis deviation is something called right shoulder deviation, or some people refer to this as uh, quote unquote, no man's land, where the axis is so far right that it's essentially moving completely retrograde to how uh, the, the, mean, uh, the mean vector of electrical activity in the heart would move. Um, let me just move my little heart here and put an arrow in there. So it'd be in this range here. So your right shoulder or extreme right shoulder axis deviation is gonna, gonna any, be anywhere from negative 90 to 180 degrees right in this range here. Um, so things that can cause right shoulder deviation or uh, what we call no man's land include things like ventricular atrophy, ectopy. So if something's coming from the ventricles, you're going to have that nice retrograde depolarization occurring. So say you have PVCs, VTAC, torsades can sometimes, if you get nice retro, if, it, if, it, if the focus or foci, foci of that is way down here and you're getting true retrograde conduction of those signals, then you're going to have um, essentially right shoulder axis uh, deviation. And then large myocardial infarctions can cause this as well. All right. That is a brief introduction to axis deviation. Hopefully this made sense.